SpaceX is only steps closer to its second orbital flight. The company is testing its latest upgrades on the launch pad as well as on the rocket's hardware. Last week was a test on the water-cooled steel plate, and now we are looking forward to the first test on the new Starship hot staging system. SpaceX transported a hot staging ring to Massey's yesterday. Its label reads B11 FWD retain slash hot stage loadhead. There'll be structural tests coming. And soon it'll come head to head with the can crusher, which is going to make this test an exciting one. Notably, this is rolling out along with the ship 26.1 skirt. This S26.1 single ring, which has been over at Massey's for quite some time laying around, was actually moved back to the production site a number of weeks ago, and yesterday got stringers and rolled out. This could be how it would be put together for testing. And without the space engineer, we wouldn't be able to imagine how this would play out. Once engineers determine the vehicle is strong enough to withstand tons of thrust, they can stack this on Booster 9 for the next flight. But doesn't it look a bit fragile? Well, what's most important is that there's usually the misconception that the most stress occurs at max Q. In reality, the greatest force is exerted near stage separation when the booster experiences three to four times the acceleration of gravity, or three or four Gs. This places a massive strain on this ring, far beyond merely supporting the weight of the ship. In fact, the ring must endure a force equivalent to the weight of the ship multiplied by three or four which amounts to approximately 5,000 tons of force. This far exceeds the force experienced during max Q. Moreover, it's essential to consider the additional challenge of torsional loads on the ring, further adding to the complexity of its design and the forces it must withstand. Regardless, envisioning this as a potential solution, the hope is that this ring becomes a true magic ring, possessing unparalleled power to conquer all these formidable challenges. This magical ring would assure a smooth, and successful journey, leaving the worries of Max Q and other stresses behind. But back on the ground, with the orbital launch mount completed a full deluge test, but back on the ground, with the orbital launch mount completing a full deluge test, it becomes clear how insane this system truly is, with the speed in which they designed it, collected parts, as well as all the custom work and hundreds of hours putting into welding, this amazing collection of photos from Chrome Kiwi is just a look at the top plate and how they might have made it with a water jet. The legs on the OLM certainly appear impressive with their fresh coat of paint. It'll undoubtedly pique curiosity to observe how well they perform during the upcoming Spin Prime and Static Fire campaigns. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am in seeing their resilience in action. Next up, an ever-increasing demand for internet access has prompted the launch of Echo Star, a powerful new communication satellite late last Friday atop a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket that will deliver broadband service across nearly 80% of North and South America. Running two days after a last-minute scrub on Wednesday, the Falcon Heavy's first stage, made up of three strapped-together Falcon 9 boosters, roared to life with a sky-lighting burst of flaming exhaust at 11.04 p.m. Eastern. Just a moment later, with its 27 engines generating more than 5 million pounds of thrust, the rocket majestically climbed away from historic Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, putting on a spectacular overnight show for area residents and tourists as it arced away to the east over the Atlantic. Two and a half minutes later, the two side boosters, making their third flight each, peeled away, reversed course, and flew back to the launch site, carrying out equally spectacular side-by-side -side landings at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station as shotgun-like sonic booms rumbled across the space coast. Meanwhile, the central core station was discarded a few moments after the side boosters departed, and the flight continued on the power of the single engine powering the Falcon Heavy's second stage. Three upper stage engine firings over the next three and a half hours were required to reach the planned deployment orbit. Tipping the scales at more than nine tons, Jupiter 3, also known as Echo Star 24, is believed to be the heaviest commercial communications satellite ever launched. With solar panels stretching 127 feet from tip to tip, the buzz size satellite will provide broadband service through EchoStar's subsidiary Hughes Network Systems. ExploreNet Communications, a longtime Hughes partner, will provide service across Canada. While SpaceX maintains its dominance in the launch market, Rocket Lab is making its mark in the orbital delivery landscape by gearing up for the 40th launch of its Electron rocket. 
However, the launch of the Electron was aborted during the engine ignition sequence. Rocket Lab has scrubbed the launch for Sunday. The launch date is currently targeted for Tuesday, August 1st of 2023 at 7 in the morning. The mission carrying the 171st satellite to date, Acadia-1, marks the first of four new radar imaging satellites for Earth observation company Capella Space. Named We Love the Nightlife, the mission showcases the satellite's unique ability to observe both day and night. These synthetic aperture radar Earth imaging satellites are Capella Space's third generation, promising top-notch imagery, excellent ground range resolution, and remarkably fast order-to-delivery speeds among commercial SAR providers. The Electron rocket initially faced challenges during its debut in May of 2017, known as It's a Test, due to a ground software failure. However, it quickly recovered, achieving successful launches for various customers, including NASA and government agencies. While it experienced a mid-launch issue during its 13th flight on July 4th of 2020, which was named PIX or Didn't Happen, and another failure on its 20th flight nicknamed Running Out of Toes, Rocket Lab has since achieved 19 consecutive successful liftoffs. Finally, for today, the Voyager 2 spacecraft, the second most distant man-made probe in space, has gone incommunicado in deep space, NASA announced on July 28th. The agency said that the communications between the spacecraft and the deep space network on Earth have been lost due to the disorientation of its antenna. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, said that the antenna is pointing two degrees away from Earth after a series of planned commands sent to Voyager 2 caused the disorientation. As of now, the spacecraft is unable to receive commands or transmit data back to Earth. Data being sent by the spacecraft is no longer reaching the DSN, and the spacecraft is not receiving commands from ground controllers, the JPL said in a statement. So where is Voyager 2 now, and what will happen next? According to NASA's real-time tracker of the probe, Voyager 2 is currently more than 24 billion kilometers away. It crossed the solar system on December 10th of 2018, becoming the spacecraft to enter interstellar space after its twin, Voyager 1, in August of 2012. From this colossal distance, NASA relies on the Deep Space Network, which is a network of three huge radio telescopes located in California in the United States, Canberra in Australia, and Madrid in Spain. The agency hopes that communications will be restored in the month of October as the Voyager 2 is programmed to reset its orientation multiple times each year, which keeps its antenna pointed toward the Earth. The next reset is scheduled for October 15th, and the communications are expected to resume. The mission team expects Voyager Voyager 2 to remain on its planned trajectory during the quiet period, JPL said. Voyager 2 was launched on August 20th of 1977, followed by Voyager 1 on September 5th, which had a different trajectory because NASA engineers had put it on a path to reach its planetary targets, such as Jupiter and Saturn. The 45-year-old probe is now facing the test of time, and only five of its 11 instruments are operational to keep it going for as long as possible. Its twin, Voyager 1, is also functioning in similar conditions with minimal energy requirements. Both the probes are powered by a plutonium-based energy source which generates electricity as the element decays. NASA estimates that both Voyager 1 and 2 will be operational until the mid-2030s. Well folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.